We're back. Welcome back. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they opt in. <laughs> <laughs> Someone out there is uh, Clockwork Orange style watching these with their eyeballs. Against their will. Yeah, somebody's, doing, somebody, somebody's trying to make someone a furry. They've just been here <laughs> so. for this entire... I mean, definitely. So we're going to start from the beginning because I figure we might as well also pick the option where we choose to lean on TJ's shoulder at the carnival. Because we're doing TJ's route now. That's the next in the in the thing. We, we, we did the four... Uh, we did the four other options and, uh, sorry, multitasking destroyed that sentence. I lost track of the what I was doing. The knocking really distracted me. Yeah. <laughs> distracted me. And the, and the text notifications and picking the choice. We did the four uh, side stories that it was recommended I do between routes, and now we're on to TJ, which is our penultimate route. We're starting over for the fourth out of five times. I, this is the longest thing ever. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's fine. It's, it's yeah, a lot of quality content. Yeah, last time we leaned on Carl, and we were also doing the Carl route first. Now it's, let's lean on TJ's shoulder as I we mean, fall asleep to the sort of racist daughter performance. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, yes, yes. I, I kind of liked that, that touch. Incorporating the dolphin show. <laughs> yeah. TJ might be smaller, but he's definitely an easy guy to convince. Especially if he thinks he's helping someone out. TJ, can I lean on you for a bit? What? Why? He looks a little uncomfortable. I'm so tired, man. Uh, alright. I lay my head in the crook of his neck and feel him tense up a little, but after a while he relaxes. There's some heat coming off his neck, and I'm pretty sure he's blushing. It's not too bad, though. He may be slender, but his fur is pretty damn soft. That's what I was gonna say, is like, Carl's definitely like, the cuddlier one. Like, if I, yeah. if I had to honestly lean on one of these people... I mean, Carl's I just like, yeah, go for it, man, whatever. He just looks co he looks comfy, he looks like a beanbag this chair. Actually, this is actually rougher to see this scene having just done the two TJ stories that we did. <laughs> And like his dynamic with Chase is not that great, honestly. And also yeah, TJ's is not Chase comfortable. Chase is kind of a dick. To and, TJ. and TJ is not comfortable with a lot of physical contact. So it's like this yeah. is not as fun of a choice anymore. His, his reaction just now being like, "Why?" Yeah, makes me kind of want to be like, "Never mind, I'm sorry." I'm sorry. <laughs> the sounds of the clapping and fiddles starts to drift away as the lack of sleep takes its toll. And then we just hear about how long we were out, and we wake up from a nightmare. Ding. I'm someone's cat. Uh, uh, does it matter? Just always be by. Well, at least we're being honest. Yeah, live your true life, Chase. Your only flaw. <laughs> honk. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's a long honk. That's the honk from us being harassed by the homophobes at the beginning of the game. When you're fast forwarding, it lasts all the way till here. Do you remember that scene? Yeah, yeah. Like I do. they go after us right when we're having our conversation with Leo. Let's find TJ, who ran off, and we all feel really bad about. <laughs> Apparently, not bad enough to pick him first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really worried about TJ. He's a sensitive guy, and after a tongue lashing like that, and not in the fun way. Yeah, I, Flynn, dude, my my brain went <laughs> instantly. I can't imagine what state he's in. I don't see him anywhere as I scan the area, but I do see some trees and bushes further up along the riverbank. Since there's really no other place to hide, I assume that's where he's at. Sure enough, I see him immediately. He's sitting down, knees drawn up with, uh, with his arms folded on top of them. He's got his forehead resting on top of his arms, staring down at the sand between his legs. Definitely a sad boy position. I stand there for a moment, wondering if it will just be better to leave him alone. After a few seconds, I finally decide to sit down next to him, cross-legged. His ears flick in my direction, and he turns his head to the left, away from me. I notice a few wet spots between his feet. Oh. Maybe he just wants to be left alone now? Dude, I, I guarantee that this route's gonna make me go <laughs> like a lot. I, I did that during like our our yeah. uh, dumb little um, little beforehand 
stories, and I just I was I was like, man, I'm gonna be making that sound a lot because TJ just makes me go, oh. Okay, a so lot of options here. D I think we should say something. Say something, say nothing, or leave him be. Isn't say nothing? I mean, leave him be and say nothing are like very Does leave similar. him be mean we leave walk away and say nothing means stay here but don't say anything. I mean, I think leave him be is the worst option, but I am curious as to what would happen to our route if we just walked away from PJ. <laughs> it just goes back to the choice again. <laughs> you it, just pick a different person. Just the game ends, you know. Hmm. I mean, I think if I was in this situation, I'd just sit, I probably would say nothing. I'd wait for him to probably start talking. I'd probably sit down next to him and be like, yeah. yeah. But it'd be weird to be like, just, just walk away <laughs> after seeing him. <laughs> you just, you walk up and he definitely notices that you're there because his ears twitch. And you just like look at him and just turn around and walk him back. <laughs> that would be really awkward. Yeah. I decide to let TJ talk when he's ready. In the meantime, I pick up a dry twig and start toying with it. Snapping it in half, then snapping the other halves in half. Like our like our friend circle. Just collapsing just, in real time. Just snap, snap, snap. It really isn't a friend circle, is it? It's really like a chain of friends. It's a group of people who, by circumstance, are together. There's like a sequence of people who are kind of friends with maybe two of the other people. <laughs> and, no, and, no, and like, at most... Chase might be the person that has the most that is the most connected in this friend group between all of them, but it's not going great for him either. <laughs> but a lot of these people definitely don't care about each other as much, uh, and it's just rough. Makes me kind of, and part of me is like, are there healthy relationships in this world? <laughs> like, yeah, does that exist for people? And as far as behind the scenes stuff going on in this game, so uh, Carl and Leo's route were definitely written by Howley. And my understanding is that Jenna was definitely written by uh, McSkinny. And then when it comes to Flynn and TJ, people very confidently say completely contradictory things. But my understanding is that TJ was written largely by Howley, maybe entirely by Howley, but, but might have been picked up at some point by McSkinny. The narrative is supposedly that this route screwed him up and he just kind of went off to write at Astra. So, oh, well, that's a good sign right there. <laughs> that's a that's not the, impending doom or anything. The, that's the hinting, at least. So, uh, anything more specific than that? People, people have very confidently said stuff that contradicts all the other people that other people have confidently said. I mean, most people that say things really confidently, like, yeah, <laughs> they don't so, know what the fuck they're talking about. It could be, it could be any mix of the answers I've I've gotten. So it could be anything. I can see that his ears are still swiveled in my direction. Probably wondering what the hell I'm doing. I think I'm getting on his nerves because he finally talks. Oh, this, this probably wasn't great for him, actually, because we know about how his internal monologue goes from the the two stories we just read. It's like uh, him, he always just assumes that he's, he's ruining everything for everyone and oh. that's not saying anything. Just lets him stew in it and wonder what we're here for. You know what? You're right, because <laughs> I would do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> I would sit there and be like... Now I'm obligated to say something. Yeah. Because this person's trying to, trying to comfort me, but now I'm going to comfort them because they're here to comfort me, so I need to say something. Like, oh man, we did the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in all of my social interactions. What do you want, Chase? I throw the pieces of the twig into the river. Just wondering where you went. You want to go back and eat? No. <laughs> Nailed it, Chase. Wow. No. <laughs> Not even just like, just just hoping you're okay or anything like that, or do you need anything? Or just like, just wonder where you went. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all he, that's, what he, that's what he went with. No. It's just the wrong answer. We sit there for a while longer as I watch the twig pieces float down the river. Finally. I can't believe he did that in front of everyone. See, that's what Chase should have said. Yeah. I'm not sure what to say, so I stay quiet. After a minute, TJ finally turns his head, looking into the river. The wind picks up, reflections from the river highlighting motes of dust that swirl up around us. His face furls a bit his face fur is a bit mussed up. 
spiked up in a few places from being wet. It's an unusual sight to see his fur unkempt. I mean, what the fu- <laughs> Oh! What the heck? <laughs> that was close. What the he- what the heck in stuff is is, is this Borker up to? <laughs> <laughs> TJ, unable to curse, even though it would probably be the best thing for him. He adjusts his legs to sit cross-legged like me and wipes his face again. Did, did you know what he was talking about? I take in a breath, unsure how I should approach this. I think so? TJ's ears lower. Listen, no one else thinks anything happened. We were all so little, especially you. I mean, I can't believe he's doing this. That's interesting. That's not the dynamic I expected. TJ asking if we know what Flynn was talking about, because Flynn's, like, going aggro on, on TJ. TJ for potentially... Having yeah, something to do with Sydney dying. Yeah, because Sydney's because TJ's supposedly the only witness of of TJ of Sydney's death is what we've gotten hints at. So this and is like the first time it's been brought up to TJ that there is a weird shadow of thoughts yeah. about him being involved in this. I I, I didn't get that impression. I thought this was something that had been it, brought up. It before. felt like a stewing thing that the group collectively tries not to talk about all the time, and it definitely felt like they would have. Made it obvious. It, yeah, I'm surprised that TJ is asking whether or not Chase knows about this premise. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Yeah, it makes me because it makes me wonder, uh, and maybe we'll find out in Flynn's route. But I just I'm like, why? Why would Flynn bring it up now? If he hasn't, if it's never come up before, ever. Yeah. I trace a claw through the dirt, drawing some wavy patterns as I try to make some sense of all this myself. I think it's just because he was such good friends with Sydney, and he just wants more than the truth. Maybe, maybe you know, we're talking about all these friends not really being friends. Maybe, like, Sydney <laughs> was, like, the magic piece that just made everybody <laughs> kind of, like, mesh, you know? Maybe, but that was so long ago. I know. I'm just, like... They've been it, friends ever since then, and it's been a long time. So far, every, well, yeah, like, so far, like, Route 65 and every substory we've read took place after Sydney's death. Yeah, and in Route 65, we're like, what are we, like, freshmen or something? Granted, we don't, none of those have really reinforced the idea of Flynn being friends <laughs> with anybody. Flynn's never been friends so with sure anybody what, in his whole life. I don't get Flynn's dynamic except for, for the Carl. most part. Except for yeah. Carl, and Carl's not, e- is not even really aware. <laughs> yeah, we just get reinforced constantly that off camera he has a good dynamic with Carl. But the rest of it's hard, it's kind of hard to tell. I look sideways at TJ. He's just sitting there, looking at the ground. And I guess you were the only one that saw him, saw what happened. So he only has you to go after. I saw him drown. Oh, shit. (laughs) I don't say anything, but I feel myself cringe inwardly. Pretty soon tears are running down TJ's face, but he doesn't bother to wipe them away. He's not just sad, though. He's angry. I hear it in his voice as he goes on. I saw Sydney drown, and Flynn thinks he's the only one that hurts? He thinks he's the only one that feels like he's in a nightmare? Well, maybe. Well, maybe. Something like that, probably. His voice cracks, and he looks away from me again, wiping at his face. Maybe I haven't told him everything, because I don't want him to have those images in his head. Are you shouldering a burden? TJ makes a, takes a moment to steady his voice, working to get his breathing back to normal. I just... I just wish I could go back to that day. TJ, there's, there's nothing you could have done. I know my words are meaningless crap, and I hate myself for saying them. But I have to say something. Not one of us would have been able to do anything if we were there. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. It's a thing you can tell yourself to feel better, which, and I get it, but, like, someone, like, there are, there are definitely, if you have time travel, if we're going to talk about time travel, then you can definitely prevent a drowning, if nothing else, then preemptively. (laughs) Yeah, preemptively, but also there's a person here who's an otter. Yeah. He's really good at swimming. 
And I mean, I granted the other person's an otter too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. There well, might have been a person. just keep wondering how they drowned. Yeah. But no, yeah, it is very bad. It is a very bad idea to try to help uh, prevent somebody from drowning because they tend to just make it worse and drown you. Yeah, the guy who made Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm just saying, if time travel's on the paper, <laughs> on the on the table, on the paper. It's it's not on the table, but I'm just I'm just I, I when people say like oh there's nothing we could have done like that's a, that's a platitude yeah because there's always something something you could have done it's just you didn't know you had to it's do just it unhelpful it's not to anyone's say anything fault. else when something's already happened and it's not helpful to think that way but saying that there was nothing you could have done is just actually I think a flat out lie but like I said you don't know you're supposed to be doing these things so it's not anyone's fault yeah you would have yeah you would have because you, you're like well an otter you can help the other otter besides know. i already know i couldn't have saved him on my own that isn't what tj takes a moment to wipe his face again when he and when he's done he doesn't go on we sit in silence for a long while after that and i adjust myself so that i can lean back against a rock behind me i pat the ground sit next to me tj He's calmed down for the most part, and after a moment, he does crawl over to sit by me. You could have moved to him. I pick up a few pebbles and toss them into the river. Remember when we used to call it Seesaw River? Yeah. He leaves it at that, so I drop it. <laughs> oh. I rest my head back and close my eyes, only then realizing how tired I am. Hang on, I need to lean on your shoulder again. It's been it's been 30 seconds from our perspective. <laughs> in some way, I can see why Flynn is so suspicious. Or at least why he believes there's more to the story. There clearly is. But while I do want TJ to tell me more about what happened, I can never bring myself to ask him. I honestly feel that if I ever want to help him with his past, I should probably come to terms with it myself. I crinkle my brow toying with the idea of going back. It's something I actively avoided thinking about. We all do. But like Jenna said, maybe talking about it, thinking about it, might actually help. I dig my fingers into the pebbles on either side of me. The images come in a quick flurry, like someone cycling through a viewmaster too fast. Oh, we're, get, we're delving into it. Oh! This we is very are. different. I'm amazed by how I think we talked about this already about Lake Berryessa and stuff. I'm just amazed by how this always looks the same, just across this this region of the country. These types of lakes just look so identical that I, I always think that they specifically went there. Which uh, once I was right, because <laughs> uh, I didn't know that much about uh, the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> so when I saw a, it was it was either American Horror Story or a movie or something. There's a movie called Zodiac. I, yeah, I don't remember if it was Zodiac or if it was the American Horror Story season that dealt that where that that referenced uh, the Zodiac killer. But there was a scene where like a couple was on a beach. Uh, they're not on a beach. They're like on a hill by a lake. And I'm like, this looks incredibly familiar. And then title card, it's like Lake Barry S. And I'm like, what? Because it was yeah. because it was actually Zodiac Killer stuff. And I'm Zodiac like, Killer super local. Yeah, us, that that fucked least. with me. I, when I, I when I started watching the Zodiac Killer movie, I didn't know that it was going to be like Fairfield, and it just showed like Fairfield police and everything. And I'm like, I'm not. I didn't know. Why didn't anyone tell me about this part? <laughs> like, <laughs> no one ever mentioned this to me. I don't think. I, uh, I didn't realize we had a local legend. Wow, what a call to fame! Oh, uh, we have a few of them, dude. Yeah. What? Like, a, what? We, we, we've, well, I mean, for me, for me, it was extremely local. <laughs> for yes. me, it was like the area, the region I went to school in. <laughs> Not like being also in California. We have like, some wow, in what this, called, in this what very called immediate area. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I grew up in the home of the Zodiac Killer and Papa Roach. Which one was wow. worse? <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, then, and now I'm in the home of Jeremy Renner and Lord George Lucas. Wow. wow. So exciting. Whoa. You know, they, they um, apparently tried... Okay, so apparently George Lucas's sister begged him to come visit this area and he was like oh guh like dragged his feet like real, want to come real back. hard because like he doesn't want to fucking have to come back here he's i don't like, want to come back when i leave <laughs> she, she's like she's like you're a big deal 
in this part of California. Like, you need to go back. And he's just like, oh, fine. Ugh. Like, his sister had a guilt trip. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, yeah. <laughs> that's so sad. I mean, I mean, once I move out of here, I'm never coming back. I don't think, like, why would I come back to this town? It's I mean, not, I'd it's only a great time. come back if you guys were still here. <laughs> that, that, oh, that'd be sad. That'd be our own little echo. Oh my gosh! You, you leave. Oh, no. You leave this area for a few years, and then you just think about who's still there all along. I come, <laughs> it's like, come why didn't they leave? Like, everyone's it's like so a, a shadow of a person still. <laughs> like they're all, they're all decrepit and like you're all wearing bracelets to remind yourselves of me. No, <laughs> <laughs> we never moved on from when Stephanie left for college. Yeah, but <laughs> for college, I'm already going to college. Go, yeah. it's in town, I can't even leave. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all have a framed picture of Kiki on your desk, like me and my dog just in a like a framed picture on the wall. It's just us being very dramatic about you being so busy with college while still living in this house. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> <"Where's> <laughs> Stephanie? It's been months already. I walk oh, into man. Keith's room. I'm like, why are there holes punched in the wall, Keith? <laughs> <laughs> manifest a fake Stephanie in the closet like fucking the Hey Arnold gum, like, yeah, we, gum idol. <laughs> we, 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 we filmed some some Echo earlier. Remember this? And I was yeah. like, I was like, just, I was like what? just uploading Let's Play commentary where I just like <laughs> You're talk by to yourself? nobody. I keep like, <laughs> like well, I mean, I'm normally by myself, but like it's well, like co-commentary with a ghost. So it's like, it's just long silences. Like, you, Haha, yeah, great job. Great idea, Stephanie. You You're so funny. You re-review the footage and there was like no one talking back to you. You're just like, I'm not even here right now, Keith. You don't even know. Yeah, you've never See, been. See, you notice my goatee's missing? You've never been you've never <laughs> been in this series. It's just been a lot an elaborate performance art where people are just like like, oh, we're supposed to pretend that there's a funny other person named Stephanie. I can't wait to hear about this episode's story about what boy he, she dated. <laughs> 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 Everyone's just like making it up as they go along. Perped in an animation that was fifty percent silence. <laughs> they're, they're all just humoring you. <laughs> That's really nice of your audience. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Anyway, let's get to the really grim story, probably. Yeah, we're, we're trying to avoid it. Yeah, that's, that's the strategy. They're coping. The sky is getting cloudy. The air crisp. Autumn. TJ is sitting in a daze. Jenna running back to town. Flynn pulling me into the water. Me grabbing onto neck scruff, pulling back to shore. Carl's on a rock, bawling. Leo start, starts trying to do compressions. And Sydney. Sydney just stares. Sirens. The helicopter rotors. Adults everywhere. I'm home. Mom's holding me. Dad puts on my favorite movie. I watch. But still, Sydney stares. Okay, so we didn't get any, we didn't get anything more, just the re, just the concrete idea of how fucked up the scene is. I was wondering if we're, what we're going to delve into specifically. So Flynn pulled Chase in to help pull the the body back out. Carl was catatonic as usual. Uh, yeah, Carl doesn't cope very well. Jenna was sprinting off to deal with it. Just a lot. Leo tried to do, Leo tried to do CPR. Probably didn't know how to do CPR because they were like Children. 12 or something. Yeah. Even if he was the big kid or whatever. That's always worth a shot. You know. Yeah. I open my eyes again and the world is blurred. The light reflecting off the river makes me squint. I rub my eyes with the back of my paw and it comes away wet. My chest hurts and so does my head, throbbing and buzzing. I look over and, luckily for me, TJ is leaning back with his eyes closed like I was. If revisiting that day is so horrible for me, I can't imagine what it's like for him. I decided right then and there that I'm not going to press TJ on what happened. If he wants to tell me more, he'll do it on his own accord. I kind of want to swim again, but at the same time, I don't. That day really fucked up my view about water. He's ruined the whole trip. TJ speaks suddenly, and I look over at him. Flynn? No, he hasn't. TJ does finally look at me then, and I'm struck by how disheveled and sad he looks. 
I feel anger bloom in my chest, all of it directed at Flynn. What a selfish prick, thinking he had the right to ruin everyone's good time just because he felt like shit. If he were here right now, I'd probably sh I'm pretty sure I'd punch him right in the gut. Listen, we don't all need to hang out to have fun. We had fun at the park with just you, me, and Carl, remember? Remember when I made you uncomfortable? <laughs> if, Flynn, if Flynn wants to be a douchebag, then let him. We'll do our own thing. Yeah, we can, we'll can. we actually hang out with you and take a hike with you and not like ignore you like in some of the other routes that we played. Where we, <laughs> All like, of the routes. <laughs> every route. I went on one hike with him, with Jenna. But every other route we've been like, we're going to hang out with you, TJ. We just don't. There's an ongoing association with the diner and ghosting TJ. Yeah. <laughs> like the time where he was running by the window and we just like, huh, what's huh, TJ up to? Interesting. Anyway, and we never followed up on that. Or the time where we where he, he went to the diner and then we didn't show up. Both times were Brian related. <laughs> Poor TJ. He's, he's, he's just not the squeaky wheel. So he doesn't tend to get like attention no. from us. I'm trying to wait. Did Brian and TJ meet last route? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, um, I'm trying to remember. Was it just Micah, Jenna, and Leo that, there? Yeah, no, TJ wasn't there when Brian was... I'm trying to remember. We were trying to find Carl and... Because TJ was like on his own that almost that whole route. I'm, I'm trying to remember when we found a TJ. Because like, everyone was in our group by the end. Yeah. And I'm trying to remember where TJ came from or when it happened. Fuck. I, I'm trying to remember too. I want to say we just run into him. I don't think it's like... Yeah. Some characters just show up. Like how Jenna was just in the bushes. Oh, no, no. He, got, he, he was in the car with Flynn. He was with Flynn? Remember Flynn shows up in his truck. And, oh, Flynn and, was chasing him because he was delusional. Yeah, because he was freaking out. Yeah. And so so Flynn's like... So Flynn and TJ show up together. And like Flynn's the worst person to calm TJ down given everything. Yeah, that's where he was. Okay. So I, I do remember hearing that TJ was like off checking the trails again or something alone. Yeah. Which we're, we were we were worried we're, about because we know stuff's like out there somewhere. Yeah. I'm like TJ's putting on a brave face. I don't know if he had any more encounters with like the with the the streetlight demon after that time or not. But like he should he might have a complex about the dark at this point. I'm surprised he's just on his own. Yeah. No. Uh, the trails are not the place I'd want to be. In, no. In this game, like by myself. <laughs> Knowing what happened to Duke in that one route just creates this looming nightmare in the background where you're just like, uh, every time anyone just wanders off, you're like, I, I, mm, where are they going? Where are they going? What are the rules? Are they about to, what's going to happen to them? Well, well, we're sticking with TJ this time, so, we'll, we'll, you know, TJ T is the safest, maybe, <laughs> in this route, probably not. TJ sniffs, and I hear his tufted ears perk up a little. Didn't you want to go hike the trail? He smiles at that and looks at me. You didn't you didn't want to hike. I could tell. I grin. That's cuz it's so freaking hot. But seriously, we didn't come here to lay in a motel all week. And we can bring water. Just dump it on yourself every half hour. <laughs> That's how I manage, along with taking plenty of breaks. TJ leans back and spreads his legs out. I can see he's starting to get excited about the prospect of hiking, and that makes me feel better. I'm realizing that, like, in the background, TJ, because he grew up around here in these trails, but he's been gone for, like, three years, so, like, it's, like, it's not just, like, he just decided that this is the f a fun thing to do on a whim, and he's like, why won't people come with me on each route? It's like, he's been looking forward to specifically going on these hiking trails, for, like, the entire time they've thought about this trip. Because he misses these routes, these, like, routes specifically, and they're, like, nostalgic and comfortable for him. Uh, it was, like, it was, like, that more... That makes it all extra sad that we've been yeah. dissing him this whole time. There's more, like, weight to it and more context to the choice than just being, like, let's, let's go do this instead of surprise birthdaying Carl. <laughs> I can see he's starting to get excited at the prospect of hiking, and that makes me feel better. Well, if you're able to do it, I guess I shouldn't complain. I mean, he's way more fit than you, yeah. Chase. Comically. <laughs> like, that, your, that comment is laughable. Yeah. I'm, I'm impressed whenever Chase successfully stands up. <laughs> yeah. I look over his fluffy form, which, by itself, is enough to make me sweat even more than I already am. Oh, they mean how hairy he is. You know, I always thought you'd go back after you graduated high school. Hmm? The Great White North. 
I say it dramatically, nodding upwards as if that's where it is. <laughs> Your parents did. TJ's family moved to Echo when he was only six from a small town called... Wasachua. Wasachua. His dad got a job in Echo to survey the land. Or do something with the wildlife. I can't remember exactly what it was. I'm not really interested in other people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I don't really remember it. But I might after I graduate. They have some things up there that sound really nice. Free healthcare. Oh, it's basically oh, like he's it's going Canada. to Canada. Wasachu was Canada. Well, I said they said a town. So oh, it's it town. Not, yeah. I've heard that they don't name any countries in this game the countries that we know them as. They're all they all have different names. You have to notice. You have to notice the swap outs. But uh, I mean, I don't think they've ever said the name of this country that we're in. No, right? not that uh, I've noticed. Maybe not. Huh. That, I guess. And snow. For a moment, I wonder if snow is to a lynx as water is to an otter. A lot of snow did sound kind of exciting to me, though. Here, we'd be lucky to see a single dusting of it a year. So, you're serious about hiking with me? Of course. I'm going to bring some of my equipment, too. I think I want to get some shots of the canyon. Okay. He waggles his furry feet back and forth, and I hide a grin at his enthusiasm. Alright, so we're going to have to get up around six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to make it to the canyon for lunch so we can rest for an hour or two, and then... You can tell how excited TJ is by how much he talks. Well, if anyone's good at planning things out at a ridiculously meticulous level, it's TJ. Then we sit there for another 20 minutes or so and just talk. Mostly about school and what our plans are once we graduate. When people plan things to a meticulous level, it makes me very stressed out. Because the, mo the human error immediately makes it impossible to follow those plans. And so you're like, fuck, 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 fuck. I like people that, that make plans. Because if I make plans, I feel like people are humoring me. So I like it better when I participate in someone else's plans. Yeah. Um, but if they're too meticulous, then there's like... They get all stressed, and I can tell they're stressed. And yeah. It, it makes me stress. And you you just have to, it, sometimes you just have to give up and just kind of like... Just, just freestyle it. <laughs> just, just react instead of uh, trying to follow a specific schedule. If you're camping and you're bringing too much stuff, then you're the person that plans too much. <laughs> if you're a person that goes camping, all you should your bring plan is a is bunch of camping. stuff to put over the fire. Yeah, you bring like book. wood and uh, maybe a tent and like a sleeping bag and and marshmallows, marshmallows and graham quackos. Yeah, I went like on a on a camping trip with my ex boyfriend's family, and they, his mom brought like a whole fucking van full of stuff, and man, packing that and unpacking that was like, I, I, <laughs> that's what I remember the most about the trip, which is like so unfortunate. <laughs> that's a really bad sign. I for know. The trip. I know. Last time I went camping, I literally brought yeah, I was like a tent, a sleeping bag, and a yoga mat, so I could had I had like a cushion, and a flashlight and a knife. I was actually the only person that even brought a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like all I brought. I brought matches. Most of my camping memories are geology trips. So it's just being way too hot all the time, but falling asleep anyway because you just were like hiking all day, every day. Your body is tired. Yeah, so you just KO on this shitty floor where you can feel the rocks through what you're sleeping on and stuff. And just kind of miserable. Like I had, uh, like I had the 10 day trip in Rainbow Basin, which is like Death Valley shit, where people, like there was a. There was a classmate that was hospitalized for heat stroke because he just brought a bottle of water. Dumbass. <laughs> like just one. Didn't listen to any what anyone was talking about about what you need to actually bring. And I was like listening to like the Game of Thrones series on audio on audiobook while just out there working and so on. And just sweating so much that like you just never have to use the restroom ever, which is a distressing feeling. And like you're also just dealing with the same clothes, so you get like the fucking salt deposits on your clothes, <laughs> like the salt rings and stuff from just how much you're sweating into these clothes from day from from several days. It's just they become solid. It's just just unpleasant as a concept. Yeah, that sounds like that sucks. I don't like yeah. that. I promise, teacher, that we'll meet up again before I d before I do. Uh, oh, before I graduate. That's when I get a text from Jenna asking where we are. I stand up, brushing off my pants before reaching down to help TJ up. Well, 
We better go back. Guess they're all wondering where we are. When we get back, everything's packed up and in the van, along with Carl and Jenna. Leo's leaning against the van, waiting for us, his paws in his pockets. He looks at me, then over at TJ, obviously trying to gauge his mood. Everything good? Yeah? TJ answers before I can, and whether or not he actually is okay, he sounds happy enough. Well, alright then. We get in the van at that point, no one saying anything as we make the short drive back to the motel. It's like the one context where Leo isn't jealous. He does not see TJ as a threat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's, as, so, he's so innocent. Yeah. As we get out, Leo tells us all that he's going to have a word with Flynn, and despite the spoiled afternoon, we still have stuff to do over the week. I'm not too convinced myself that that, that will happen. I am convinced that it's going to be awkward as fuck if we do. Leo leaves for work at that point, though Carl does end up coming with us to the motel room. The rest of the day is pretty uneventful. We watch a few movies, then go to the diner for dinner. Afterwards, we just sit in the room and talk, Carl filling us in on how things have been in the town over the past three years. This is the most hanging out on day one we've done in any route. Yeah, no, usually just skips like the next yeah. day. Carl's immediately kidnapped or, di or disappeared for a while. <laughs> we just never see him for the most of the route. Or like the next day we're like planning for Carl's fake birthday party. Yeah. It's not long before the conversation drifts back to Flynn and his outburst. I think he's just antsy because he's reading how shitty it's been without you guys. Or realizing how shitty it's been without you guys. Trust me, he's already kicking himself for it right now. Even if he is, it doesn't mean anything unless he apologizes. Oh, you know how he is, Jenna. He's sorry even if you won't say it. Well, convenient. He doesn't have to ever say it. <laughs> I don't care. He's going to have to realize that none of us have to put up with him anymore. Hey, uh, why don't we all get some ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've been wanting to go to Ray's ever since we got here. It's hard to tell if TJ is just trying to change the subject or actually wants ice cream. Probably both. I like how ice cream comes up, but like, fucking... If I was Carl, wouldn't I just be sick of ice cream? I don't, I, yeah, I don't know how much he actually has ice cream, though. Because they just own ice cream, but he does they don't work at ice cream. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> so he does, I mean, it's not like the experience of working at an ice cream shop. It's just being an ice cream heir. I'm, I'm not an ice cream person. I like ice cream. Snow they're cones in the desert, cool. so it's even better. <laughs> snow cones are objectively worse than ice cream. Oh, I see. I like snow cones. I will fight to the death. <laughs> I that they're, they're, they're crunchy. People are like, oh, ice cream is just cold. And it's really rich. I just need a lot of water when I sure. eat it. Sure. But I've I've been doing a thing where I uh, I'll get I'll get a uh, a, 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 what's it called uh, yogurt mill. They'll have the uh, the chocolate frosty flavor of uh, of the actual ice cream or the, the yogurt, I guess. And then you can get uh, the layered in Oreos throughout it. And then what you do is you then stick it in the freezer. And just leave it for a day, and you come back afterwards, and the Oreos get soft, <laughs> but not like not like soggy, like gross no, cereal soft. But like they yeah. stop being they stop becoming they stop being overtly crunchy and get a consistency. It's more like those like like those chewy cookies. Yeah, they they, like, they become like, stale. It, it's great. So they they like they the humidity affects the the Oreo. I, I love that the uh, the yogurt makes the uh, the Oreos like chewy. And then it, and it like becomes this really good consistency. That's been like my 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 hack. <laughs> you know, you could just leave Oreos out. You ever like if you buy Oreos and you just leave the the plastic seal off, it, they become like that. Yeah, but that was the uh, but it's with the yogurt. I want the yogurt too. It's not the yogurt's not incidental. It's not the, the yogurt's not a strategy to make the Oreos soft. See, I've just I've just accidentally I've just le uh, left them in as leftovers and been like, hang on a minute, this is great. I'm gonna do this on purpose. <laughs> I, I like it's okay like like I don't know it's just like ice cream is not satisfying to me like if I if I go there it's like man I wish I had something that was just chocolate which is why I like I like their Nutella fruit yeah. bowls but it's like it's not chocolate enough and it's not refreshing enough like a Dole Whip is really good and like a snow cone is really good ice, ice cream is just like it's too rich 
and it's not chocolatey enough. Ice cream is great. I don't know how you like this. I don't know. I'm weird. The, the, my favorite ice wrong cream. wrong about everything. I have one favorite ice cream, and it's Cherry Garcia by Ben and & Jerry's. <laughs> and it's because it has fruit in it, because I like fruit in my I just, chocolate I, and fruit together. I think that half the so time, weirdo. ice cream's about restraint. Because people, like, drown it in toppings and swirls and shit, and it just becomes this nightmare. And that's just not necessary. Ice cream's already <laughs> enough. For the no. most part. I get, well, like, one topping total or nothing. I like how uh, Cold Stone offers, like, like gummy bears and stuff, but everyone knows if you eat the gummy bears, they get all hard and it's impossible to eat. <laughs> like, half the toppings you put on there, you can't eat with the ice cream anyway. No, that's not a good call. I always I usually get apple pie there. Keith and his apple. It's his good. Apple love. Apple pie is a good flavor. It's better than every cake. I mean, I don't like cake, so I'll agree with exactly. you on that one. <laughs> you just don't like cinnamon. I don't like cinnamon. That is the problem. <laughs> if you want to drive half an hour to Peyton, sure. What? Why? They moved it there. It sucks. I haven't had the Rocky Road for a year now. Oh. Well, let's just stop by when we go to Peyton next. I assume we aren't staying in Echo for the rest of the trip. Oh. Uh, Chase, could you take us? I just smile at him from my spot on the couch. Sure, why not? Yes! I love the cookie dough! What about you, Jenna? Jenna's busy looking at her phone. Hmm? Oh, well, I've always enjoyed their butter almond. It's hard to find that flavor anywhere else. That sounds pretty okay. TJ looks at me and I open my mouth to answer. But for a moment, I draw a blank. The memories of Ray's hazy and blurred. My head is still buzzing. Oh, uh, vanilla. Lame. <laughs> Flynn was right. Flynn was right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been feeling pretty shitty ever since I had that talk with TJ by the river. I make a mental note to steal some of Jenna's aspirin before I go to bed. Well, Flynn was right about one of us, at least. Oh, Damn! Same thought process. Yeah, he's <laughs> Get roasted. Carl! What's wrong with that? Everyone likes vanilla. Ugh. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not much for vanilla, honestly. I like vanilla in other things. Like You gotta mix it with something. Vanilla's just... Not, vanilla's rough on its own. I grin, even though Carl's comment hurts me more than it should. <laughs> He's just joking, after all. Is he, though? <laughs> but, I mean, who loves it, right? Personality of a rock. I think it's a good answer, especially if you put toppings on it. Because <laughs> vanilla sucks, you need to fix yeah, it. Yeah, he's trying to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> the buzzing picks up, and I feel a dull pulse behind my eyes. The three of them continue to, t to talk amongst themselves as I lean my head back against the couch. I close my eyes, trying to will away the pounding in my head. Oop. I open my eyes. The room is dark. Jenna's in her bed, TJ in his. Carl's wrapped, a blank wrapped in a blanket on the floor. Aww. He just stayed here. Carl route, let's go. We're gonna see Carl go outside ever, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll hang out with Carl more in this route. Yeah. Maybe even in Flynn's route, because Flynn and Carl go together. I lurch for my camera bag, then look around wide-eyed. I sit on the bed next to TJ and stare at the door. TJ stands at the edge of the lake, staring across the other side. He has one paw in his pocket, and the other holding a beer. He takes a drink from it. TJ doesn't drink beer. He pulls the tab off the top, then flicks it towards the lake. It whizzes like a weed cutter skipping across the water and kicking up spray. Suddenly his ears snap up and he sees something I don't. He turns and starts to run. He's at a dead sprint when his leg snaps out from under him and he falls to the rocks, beer splashing everywhere. A chain is pulled taut from the lake, connected to his ankle. I get up, wanting to help, but I can't. I look down, my wrist and ankle chained. That whole like visual hasn't come up for a long time. No, I think it can I don't remember if it came up in Carl's route or if it came out before the route split. It was... When we had the dream about it. I thought it was in Carl's route. I, th I thought it was Carl's route where it came up the first time we 
saw it, but maybe I'm misremembering. Yeah. I, I just it's from our first route, but our first route included the entire prologue part. Yeah, that was definitely when he yeah, because he definitely had a specific memory of he had a, a dream about being dragged into the lake by a, the chain. That's why I, I was calling to that as being like like this this ties in with the wristband and everything. The sun is bright, and I'm pretty sure I can smell the fur searing on top of my head. Oh, man. It's the end of March, so it's not nearly as bad as it can be. But being right under the sun like this... We've only been on the trail for about ten minutes at this point, but I'm already regretting it. Chase? TJ, who's about five feet ahead of me, turns around. It's at that point that I realize he's said something, and I have no idea what it is. Everything okay? Uh, yeah. Sorry, what did you say? He looks concerned and walks and walks back towards me. Remember, if you have a headache or feel sick to your stomach, or if you start feeling like you're not yourself, don't worry, I'm fine. Also, I think that's just like a baked-in problem with Chase since forever <laughs> is the concern of not feeling like himself. So how does, I don't know how he feel how he'll identify that it's a heat problem. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I try to give him a smile to show it's true, but he's already in the process of unscrewing a bottle of water from his backpack. No, wait, you don't have to... He dumps half of it over my head, and I hurriedly unshoulder my camera bag. <laughs> oh no, with camera. Watch the equipment. Sorry, Chase, but you're not having a heat stroke on my watch. Captain TJ is here to save the day. You know, I've studied otter, otter physiology. You guys don't do well in dry, hot environments. Well, thanks for bringing me to a hot, dry <laughs> environment, TJ. He's pretty close to me, having to dump the bottle over my head. I keep holding the bag away from my body while I look at him, water dripping from my whiskers. Otter physiology? Yeah. It's like your body, its parts, and what they do. Watching porn again, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. It's like, normally when you... <laughs> If you, if, you say, if you say to someone, like, I've been studying your, your species physiology, it sounds like you're coming on to them. It's like, you know, I, I've studied a lot about, you know, your your your, your type of body. <laughs> like, yeah. It's very suggestive in a way that he, I know never, a lot he about will the never female pick up form. on about himself. <laughs> it's a little odd. I'm doing a study. It's a little awkward that TJ knows how my body works for some reason. Huh. So, like... You've studied all our parts. The attempt at humor is weak in the first place, but I realized too late that I'm talking to TJ, and that he probably wouldn't have laughed even if it was funny. He looks a little taken aback. Oh, well, yeah. We all have different anatomy, so it's important to... He trails off, and I can tell that he's blushing. I know who has the biggest dick size in the <laughs> animal kingdom. <laughs> it's, the, it's the blue whale. The blue whale. Um, a long while ago in high school, yes, that was a long while ago. Oh, no. I, I was I was taking a I was taking an anatomy an advanced anatomy class and an art class at the same time. So I did an abstract painting of the uh, male reproductive system, and oh. I submitted it as an abstract art piece, and it got hung up in the uh, <laughs> it got hung up in like the 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 like in the hall where they have like this. Not the stadium, but like the um, the stage four plays and stuff. And I thought that was so fucking funny because nobody <laughs> knew what it was. No one recognized but, what it was. But it was yeah, it was an abstract painting of the male reproductive system from the side because that would was it, like would it, would it, if I saw it, would it have been obvious, um, it noticeable? Maybe because you're smart. But uh, <laughs> wow, no, nobody, nobody noticed. They just thought it was shapes. I, just, <laughs> I, I hate doing the math where it's like, hey, remember high school fifteen years ago. Like, uh. <laughs> Is it 15 years ago? For me, I'm older. High school is now almost as long ago as it was I was the age as when I oh, graduated. Oh no! <laughs> I hate thinking about that. Yeah, because he graduated at 18 and I'm like, it was now 15 years ago and it's like, I... Mm. He, the, All right. Your young viewers aren't going to like us if they know how old we are. I, I, I mean, at this point, I'm just stuck with it. I know, but just we're, stuck we're with supposed it. to pretend like we're younger. <laughs> McSkinny, so we're hit. McSkinny called me a gray muzzle, which is what you call old furries. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to start calling you that. That's pretty funny. I mean. <laughs> you could just start calling me a crone right I mean, now. You'll you'll see at the 
you'll see at a at the Las Vegas Furcon. Fucking, uh, we're old. <laughs> I, I see it when I when I go to concerts. I go to concerts and I'm like, who the fuck are all these children? And, and then the thing that sucks <laughs> who, is... Why, why, who are their parents? Who's letting them out? Dude, I went to a concert and someone was there with their mom. And I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh. But then at the same time, it's like, I'll go to like Elton John and I'll see a bunch of like old, old, old folks who are like, you're the youngest person here. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> who let this one in? She has piercings. <laughs> I know. I know. But uh, I mean, Elton John fans are—they're they're not judgmental. They were very, very nice, very flamboyant yeah. group of old folks, old lesbians everywhere. I loved them. But the um, no, what's what's scary to me is I go to a concert and I'm like, I realized it's like, oh, these people know this song because apparently it's popular on TikTok right now, and I didn't know that. <laughs> and that's that. I hate that. That makes me upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you know about this song from TikTok? Oh no, that's on TikTok. That's why I was questioning it. I was questioning that this morning, where I was like, "Why does this song keep coming up? Is it from TikTok, or is this is this a gay thing? Is there a gay trend I don't know about? Is this cultural? I don't know." I was like, "You're out of touch. I'm out of time." I'm like, I don't I don't know why I keep encountering that song this year specifically. I, I don't know what happened. It could be anything. I, I'm, so, I, I mean, I'm out of touch and out of time. Out, <laughs> yeah, gray muzzle. <laughs> no. Why did I tell you this? I love it. I love it. It's cute. I can tell he's blushing. He frowns at me. Are you making fun of me? What? No, I, I was just trying... He turns away suddenly and, sta and starts back up the trail. We should keep going. It's an all-day hike. It's an all-day hike because I said it's all day. That was one <laughs> it the, is my choice. That's one of the rough things about the flashback stories is we also now know that TJ is very aware of the fact that he's being snidely made fun... Like, people are snarkily making fun of him all the time. He's not like... He's oblivious to things, but he's not oblivious to this dynamic. Like, he knows that people are mocking him all the time, and, like, that makes it rougher. Yeah, I'm more sympathetic. I follow him quietly. It's hard to judge the type of expression he he just had on his face. It wasn't exactly angry, more flustered. I'm pretty sure it's because he knows I like guys. Even in college, my straight male friends get uncomfortable when I joke about sex, like they think I'm coming on to them. TJ has never told me how he feels about my sexuality. In fact, I know nothing about his sexuality. Remember the time he called you on the phone and yeah, I don't know. I think he. Forgot. I think he. I think he dated one girl in high school, but that fell apart pretty quick. I think that's the entirety of his memory. Uh, remember he called you and you guys trying to reach remember out to you? Remember when he confided you? in you and you were like, huh, maybe, maybe you're asexual, ha ha ha. Anyway, back to getting blown by by Leo, bye. I know, he really didn't retain that, that yeah. whole experience. I mean, Chase very much did not seem to care about what TJ was he, going through. You could have followed up on that. both those stories. I, I'm getting the feeling that the they didn't actually talk about it on Monday. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about it on Monday. She had problems fitting in, so he befriended her. Obviously, she took it as him liking her, so she asked him out. Oh, she asked him out. <laughs> TJ, of course, couldn't say no. He's always on a quest to make other people happy. Anyway, he definitely isn't homophobic. He seemed really happy for me when he found out I was going out with Leo. And he seemed really sad when he found out that we broke up. He doesn't exactly follow any particular Christian denomination that I know of. He hasn't even weighed in on the whole Jesus species debate. There's a species debate about oh, Jesus. Jesus. I guess it's like when people argue about whether or not, like people argue about Jesus being black and so on. He would have been black. <laughs> yeah. Because 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 he's represented as being white, like basically everywhere, and that doesn't make any sense for where he actually was. There, there's a whole episode of of Moral Oral where they have band aids, but they live in a Christian town, so they're they're like Jesus colored band aids, and so they're all white. Because they're they're the Jesus brand bandits. Oh. Oh, what a fucking thing to call them! <laughs> what a nightmare! Well, the whole show's about that. And so what ends up he realizes that there's like a brown kid in his in his in his church because he puts the bandaid on him and he realizes it doesn't match his skin. Mm. He's like, why doesn't this match you? And he realizes it's because he's a different color. Uh, it's like the uh, the sort of implied racism of just having flesh colored things. I know. Yeah, like, like when you get like a crayon and it's like called like yeah. flesh. Crayon and you're like, color, hey, and you're like, like hang on a wait minute. a minute. This is a strong assumed default. So there are other colors of crayon that could be flesh colored, but you don't, you don't call those flesh colored crayons, do you? No. And 
that would be deeply confusing too. Almost like it's just a bad idea to call anything flesh colored. I mean, that's honestly just kind of gross anyway. So. Yes. It's just the species debate. From what I can gather, TJ just likes the spirituality of the whole thing. Once Leo told me that TJ's the type of Christian that Christians always say they are, but definitely aren't. I have to agree. Aw, that's nice. That is nice. That is, that's... <laughs> I, I would like a lot of Christians to be the types of Christians that Christians always say they are. But usually <laughs> that'd aren't, great, That'd yes. be great news. 